Number 16. Two important industrial chemicals, ethene, which is C2H4, and propene, which is C3H6, are produced by the steam or thermal cracking process, and then they give us this balanced equation. So we have two C3H8 gases, which will produce the ethene, C2H4 gas, plus the propene, which is C3H6 gas, plus methane, which is CH4, and then we got lonely hydrogen right here, H2 gas. Now for each of the four carbon compounds, do the following. So we got to draw the Lewis structure, predict the geometry about the carbon atom, and then determine the hybridization of each type of carbon. Okay. So we're just going to take it step by step. It seems like we have to do it for the four of these. So I have four carbon compounds. So I guess let's just, just start from left to right. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'll start it up here, is the C3H8 one. Okay. So now, let's draw the Lewis structure. Now, for organic molecules, which are organic compounds that are hydrocarbons, carbon and hydrogen, um, the easiest way to do this is to string along your carbons first, because remember, hydrogen can never be in the middle of a compound. Those are always going to be on the outside. So in order to make this a chain, I'm going to link my three carbons together. So I have carbon, 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 and now I'm just going to try to um, put the hydrogens at a place. Actually, let me just bring this down a little bit. Carbon, 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 and now I just arrange the hydrogens around so that they're symmetrical. So maybe... I'll put one hydrogen here, and then I'll put the other hydrogen over here. We'll put one hydrogen on the top. Actually, we'll put three on the top, and then three on the bottom, and that gives you the eight hydrogen. Let's now put the valence electrons. Remember, hydrogen can only have one valence electron, so they all get one, 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 one. And then with your carbon, carbon always has four valence electrons. It's in group 14 or 4A. So it's, it's got the four valence electrons. And now we're ready to bind. Remember, hydrogens, they only want a single bond. So seems like all these are just going to be single bonds, right? Single, single, single bonded out. It's a little sloppy, but you kind of get the, the hint here. There we go, there's our Lewis structure. And for each carbon in the middle, they have the octet, right? Because they all have eight electrons here, eight electrons here, eight electrons here. So now instead of going on to B, let's just do all the Lewis structures. So the next one I'm gonna do is C2H4. And maybe I'll start that one down here. So it's kind of like the same exact idea here. Now I just have two carbons stringing along, and I have to put four hydrogens equally on both sides. So maybe I will just do one over here, one over here, one over here, and one over here. You could have stacked them, you know, put one hydrogen right up top and one down below. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, okay. Each hydrogen has one valence electron, and then each carbon has four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Always single bonded up first just to see what you get. And the hydrogens are all going to be good because they only want the single bond. But now in this case, if I just single bond from carbon to carbon, the carbons do not have the octet. So that's why they need that extra bond, and now we have a double bond. And now this carbon has eight electrons, two, four, six, eight, and so does this carbon as well. So that's the second Lewis structure, already done. Let's now move on to C3H6. Three carbons strung along, so one, two, three. And now I have to divvy up six hydrogen, Let's see if I can do that nicely. Now, in this case, 
there's a trick here because if I tried to divvy it up nicely, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just see, right? We'll do like an experiment. Each hydrogen has one. Okay. Each carbon has four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's make those single bonds. The hydrogens always want to have one bond, so they're done. And now single bond it with the carbons. One and two. It seems like this carbon is good, right? Because it has the octet, but these carbons are not. But that's the problem. Do you see how I can't make a bond here because this carbon doesn't have the extra dot? The extra dot's all the way over here. And even if this one kind of gave the dot to the other carbon, this one would not have the octet. So... What we have to do is, for this one, we have to say, okay, maybe it can't be symmetrical. Maybe I will put some more hydrogens on one side than the other. But that's okay. It's all about guess and check. So let's see. Maybe if I put one hydrogen here and here for this carbon, so that's two. And then maybe if I do three, four, five, and then six. Now, your hydrogens, you could have put that one up top here. doesn't matter, but let's just see now. Each hydrogen has one bond. And then the carbon have four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Single bond and see what you get. Single bond, single bond. This will only have a single bond for now. Single bond, and let's see. Okay, so this carbon has the octet, but these have seven, but look, they have the pair. So now they can make that double bond. Nice job. And then the last one is the methane. So that's CH4. This one is just going back to basics, right? You just have a carbon surrounded by four hydrogen. One, two, three, four, you probably can guess what's going to happen. Each hydrogen has one bond. Just kidding. One valence electron. Each carbon has four valence electrons. Single bonded up, and that's the end of the day for methane, or CH4. Okay, so step one, done. Whew. We now have all the four drawings. So now we're going to streamline step B. We're going to predict the geometry about the carbon atom. Okay. So, we'll start with the C3H8. Now, if we notice that each of these carbons are all the same, right? If we just analyze, when I mean all the same, I mean that they all just have four single bonds, right? This carbon just has four single bonds around it. This carbon just has four single bonds around it. This carbon just has all single bonds around it. Doesn't matter necessarily who you're bound to. If they all have four single bonds, they're all going to have the same geometry. So it doesn't matter which uh, carbon we talk about. I'll talk about the first one, but then just know that the geometry is going to be the same throughout. So that's where this comes into play. Now, probably your teacher or professor probably wants you to memorize these geometries, um, but I just put it on the screen here just so that we have something to reference. But now, when we're searching for geometries, we just need to know the central atom and how many atoms is it bound to. Now, in this case, the carbon is bound to one, two, three, four atoms. So I'm looking for a central with four atoms and no lone pairs in the middle. So I skim this. And on a test or a quiz, I would, you know, think about it. And I come up with this. Did you get that? This one has the central atom, A, in the middle, surrounded by the four X's, and there's no dots for A. So this would be tetrahedral. Okay, which means that all of these are tetrahedral. 
So just, just, just note that, okay? And as we continue forward, any one has, uh, you know, four bonds, that's tetrahedral as well. So this guy is tetrahedral. And this one is also tetrahedral. Okay. Next, C2H4. I see that these carbons are a little different, but they're the same to each other, right? Each one of these has only three atoms bound, right? This carbon has only three atoms bound to it. So whichever one is the hybridization, uh, not the hybridization, the geometry, the other one is two. So let's just pick the one on the left. Now for this one, I'm looking for a central atom that has one, two, three atoms bound to it and no lone pairs, right? I don't see that this carbon has any lone pairs and maybe I will just put this out as a different color just for it to stand out. So I scan this and I need three X's, no lone pairs, so and that's this one up here. That's trigonal planar. So since they're exactly the same, this is trigonal planar, trigonal planar, and this one is trigonal planar. Okay. So now when we move on to C3H6, you say, wait a minute, this carbon, and, and maybe, maybe I'll just highlight these blues because the blues are going to be all tetrahedral and the greens are all going to be trigonal planars. So I look at this carbon and I say, wait a minute, this carbon looks exactly identical as these two. It has the one single, the two single bonds and the double bond, right? It's got the three. So we already know what that is. That's a trigonal planar. Okay. So now I go on to the next compound or the next carbon, but I say, wait a minute, this carbon has three again. So this one is also trigonal planar. How fun is that? And then when I come over to this carbon, I say, well, wait a minute, this carbon looks like who? This one now has four bonds, right? Four atoms that's bound to it. So this one is the blue one. This one is tetrahedral. That was fun. And now for your final one, we have the single carbon, but that also has the four atoms bound to it. So this one also gets a blue. And this is tetrahedral. And maybe I'll just move this a little bit over here. Tetrahedral. Okay, so part B is done. Now, the last thing we got to do is to determine the hybridization of each type of carbon atom. And that's where this comes into play. So there's five total hybridizations. Let's see which ones we're going to use here. Now, the hybridization is just the orbitals that are going to be overlapping to make those bonds, whether they're single or double bonds. But the hybridization is all linked up with the number of letters. For example, if you're sp2 hybridized, you have an S and two P's. P2 means you got two P's. You have a total of three letters. The same thing for SP. You only got two letters, two letters. The number of letters always turns into the number of things that are surrounding that element. So what classifies as a thing? Well, one single bond is one thing. One whole complete double bond, even though it's got two lines, it's one thing. One triple bond is one thing, and one lone pair is one thing. So if we go back up to the top for tetrahedral, what does the tetrahedral have around it? Well, just you just count the things. Okay, well, it's got a single bond. That's one thing. It's got another single bond. That's two things. I see another single bond. That's three things. And I have another single bond. That's four things right? So for tetrahedral, four things, that equates to the letters, four letters. So tetrahedral would be sp3. And let's just see if the other tetrahedral would be the same. Let's do the one on the end, right? This one. Well, this has a single bond. It's got another single bond. 
That's two things, three things, and four things. Is it a coincidence that tetrahedrals all have four things? I doubt not. So all tetrahedrals, wherever they are, it's always going to be sp3 hybridized. So I can just now just go to this one. Since we called it a tetrahedral, it's going to be sp3. And all the other tetrahedrals down here, like this carbon, that's sp3 hybridized. So that one's done with. This carbon, which is tetrahedral, that's sp3 as well. Now the only other one to do is your trigonal planers. So let's just try them out. Let's do maybe this one. Well, how many things does it got? Well, it's got one single bond around it. It's got another single bond, so that's two things. And now I have one whole double bond. I don't care that it's two lines, it's still one thing. So I have a total of three things here, right, around this carbon. So three things, and, and maybe I'll do it in blue. Three things, you got it, equals three letters. And that's SP2, hybridized. So is it going to be a coincidence that all trigonal planers are SP2? Nope. So anytime that you see a trigonal planer, it's always going to be SP2 hybridized. So these, these four carbons are all SP2 hybridized because trigonal planer goes to both of these. Okay. And then this one's checked off and we did this problem. What'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love helping you guys out. And, you know, thanks so much for watching these videos and telling your classmates and telling your friends about this channel. My brother and I, we really do appreciate it. And we really do appreciate you guys. We're so glad that this channel can help you out. And yeah, we're just excited to see you guys get great grades on your tests. So anyway, keep studying hard and I will talk to you in the future. Okay, bye-bye.